China could put an end to the to this TikTok deal. <laughs> they were so close. <laughs> so so we kind of knew that this was a possibility. Obviously, uh, when the details started coming out and they were a bit murky, and it was like, wait, who owns this thing? And why, how can everybody be satisfied with these parameters? Uh, you knew there had to be a wrench. You knew there had to be a wrench at some point, and that wrench is obviously China. It was always going to be China. Mm. Bike dance can't just do whatever they want, mm -hmm. right? There's some sort of, particularly if the U.S. government is involved. Well, of course, the Chinese government has to be involved. Mm -hmm. They can't. It can't just be one gov one sided government involved. If they're going to approve of whoever happens to head the acquisition, then that means the U.S. government is single handedly blessing, let's say, Oracle and Walmart. Well, then the Chinese government's going to say, well, do we bless any of this? Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening right now. They've, uh, they've uh, called the tactics dirty and unfair. They've said it's bullying and extortion. And, of course, this, is, uh, this was reported on China Daily newspaper, which is state-backed. So, you know, it's saying exactly what the state wants to say, mm. which is uh, dirty and unfair. And you have to believe, man, in, internally in those meetings and in those government offices, they don't want to let Trump get that win. Yeah. They don't want to let Trump say, look what I did. Look what I did here. Uh, wonderful uh, new software mm -hmm. inside of, am I Obama or Trump right now? All politicians <laughs> have both. a sort of, they have a thing like that. Yeah. But he would say, you know, Oracle, tremendous job. Amazing job. My pal Ellison, uh -huh. amazing guy. Top-notch guy. He's, He's got servers. He would say TikTok's going to be bigger and better than ever. I mean, it would seriously seem like he stole it to a certain extent. Yeah. Whether there was still 80% ownership with that ByteDance had or not, it would still seem like that and be portrayed as that. And the Chinese government be sitting there saying, well, we're not about to have that run on our media. And people find out that this huge international success story is now being called something else. Mm-hmm. It's not being called a Chinese success story, but instead it's being called it's being used as a success story for him. So it's totally understandable why they would resist this thing. Here's another quote. What the United States has done to TikTok is almost the same as a gangster forcing an unreasonable and unfair business deal on a legitimate company. <laughs> oh man. It also says China has no reason to approve the dirty and unfair deal. Bullying and extortion, Oracle, Walmart. What can I say on this matter? I don't know what's better or worse at this point. If you're China, I understand the, the, the optics, as they say. I understand it looks bad. But does, is it really, does it look so bad that you're prepared to die on this position? That you're prepared uh, to have the thing go away completely? Because that's what will happen. And all the hard work from all these people, creators and developers is just gone. But there's also a money aspect too, right? Of course. Yeah. But billions, it's not... Billions of dollars? In the scope, the money aspect, in the scope of international negotiations and trade deals is, pennies for them, is very you know? small. But you're right. It is certainly to ByteDance, the company, yes. and certainly to Oracle and Walmart. It's big business. It's yep. big money to them. Uh, I don't know. If I had to bet right now if it goes through or not, with the current terms, I'm, I'm probably going to say no. And here's the thing. This has been a lot now going on. Obviously, TikTok has been just, just a juggernaut, right? Just taking over social media. It takes so much work and effort to build something. It's a totally different question when it comes to breaking something. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's the equivalent, you know, in a schoolyard, you build a huge tower and then somebody walks over and knocks it down. Yeah. And you're like, that which, took me. Which guy were you? The both, <laughs> probably both at different points. I think we've all been both at yeah. different points. Oh, yeah. To be yeah. fair. You're right. Uh, but the, the opportunity to destroy TikTok would, re I think, require less than many people perceive. If the app goes down for an extended period of time, these embedded habits that people have, of that, that set of apps that they open on a frequent basis, if that app goes down for two weeks, for a month, you know, in social media time, mm. people will find other places. They have to. They adapt. They adapt quickly. 
And sure, you could bring it back, but would it ever be the juggernaut that it is currently? So we got to wait and see what happens. I'm not even a TikTok user, so I don't have a horse in the race, so to speak. Mm. However, other social media companies, Zuckerberg, Facebook, they've all been critical of this because there's a recognition that if this becomes the norm, their own businesses could be in trouble in other places yes. that they do business. And that actually brings me to our next story.